Okay, item 10 is a public hearing to consider a proposed community improvement district. I'm going to ask the clerk to perform the first reading on item 10A, please. In order to approving a petition for the creation of the Raytown Crossing Community Improvement District, creating the Raytown Crossing Community Improvement District, and authorizing the city to enter into a cooperative agreement by and between the city of Raytown, Missouri, and the district. I'm going to uh, open the public hearing on this at this time. I'm going to ask the board if they have any ex parte communication they would like to share on this matter. Mr. Ertz. Um, I did uh, drop in Payless Shoe Store, which is next door, and talk to the owner there. And she, um, the gentleman was very excited about a few things that could happen in that in that area. And I just wanted the board to know that know that uh, the, uh, with the general manager there was uh, Keith Mason, and uh, that's all I have. I'd like to share also that I've been in a number of meetings with uh, regarding this particular subject, so I uh, hereby admit to that. I don't think it will affect my vote in the event that I have to vote tonight. Any further announcements for us? Okay. Uh, Mr. Willers, before I go further, I want to make sure that I'm clear on the, uh, the protocol here. I understand that uh, the applicant is asking for both readings tonight. It's my understanding that we actually need to go through the, uh, the public procedure, public hearing procedure the first time in its entirety, and then the board would have an opportunity to continue at a, or suspend the rules at that time and go, okay, very good. Very good. All right. Um, Mr. Cole, you are Mr. Wilmoth. Wil Would you like to explain the application, please? Yes. Thank you for the time, Mayor and, and Board of Aldermen. As you know, we've been working, staff's been working with Sutherland Lumber Company for many months now. Uh, and Sutherland, Sutherland Lumber is in the process of purchasing the former Walmart building at 6709 Blue Ridge Boulevard. The project will allow Sutherlands to fully occupy the vacant 90,000 square foot former Walmart building for retail sales. On behalf of the current property owner, which is Walmart, Sutherland Lumber Company has petitioned the City of Raytown to establish the Raytown Crossing Community Improvement District. The firm is seeking approval of, of, of the CID to assist in offsetting some of the costs associated with the redevelopment of the entire area, including facade, parking lot, landscaping, and any public improvements that may be required. The cooperative agreement between Sutherland Lumber Company and the City of Raytown is currently being crafted. In fact, we received a draft of that document this afternoon, and that's before you at each of your settings this, this evening. Uh, however, to assist the developer in expediting the project, we are introducing the petition now. Tonight, we have a public hearing and full presentation on the petition uh, for your review. Uh, as Sutherland Lumber Company is working under a strict contract date with Walmart, which is at the end of February, uh, they are requesting both readings of the ordinance this evening. Uh, the applicant is present and can address the urgency of this particular project and why they are requesting both readings this evening, as well as the status of the project and, and ability to answer any questions you may have this evening. Mr. Wilmoth, anything to add, sir, before we go to the applicant? All right, very good. Christine, would the applicant like to make a presentation tonight? Yes. Mighty cheerful tonight. Uh, well, this is a pretty cheerful We haven't seen project. an attorney dance up here since Mr. Van Busker <laughs> talked about attorneys well, earlier. Well, you know, so. it's, it's a night to celebrate yeah. attorneys, so I, I think this is a good thing. Um, thank you very much. My name is Christine Bushyhead with the White Goss Law Firm. I'm at 4510 Bellevue, Kansas City, Missouri, 64111. I'm here um, on behalf of Sutherland Lumber Company of Kansas City to present um, our information regarding the petition for the formation of the CID. Um, we are excited to be here. I have with me tonight uh, Paul McKnight, who is the Assistant Controller of Sutherland uh, Lumber Company, um, Kansas City LLC. And uh, he, he's here to answer questions, but we're essentially going to go through for you the information you actually have in your packet. Um, it's important for us to note, and we've seen copies of the certified notice that was sent to the property owners. Um, the statute requires that be sent um, um, at least 15 days prior to the hearings, and in fact, those were sent out timely on January 28th. Also, an affidavit of publication, um, uh, we have seen that, that was provided by the clerk's office, and there's been an advertisement for this public hearing for two consecutive weeks prior to this evening on, on February 1st and February 8th, which is also in compliance with the statute for CID hearings. 
Um, we have presented to you a petition. It's been signed um, by um, the uh, Sutherlands uh, on behalf of the property owner. There is only one property owner involved here, so uh, we've met the threshold of 50% of those um, uh, owners of, of assessed valuation as well as uh, per capita. And um, we would like this uh, CID to be created to assist in um, uh, underwriting some of the development costs. Um, we are intending on having a, a sales tax and an increment of 1% on this particular site to assist in, in that, in, in paying for reimbursable project costs, which we'll talk about in a little more detail. And um, we are not asking for any other incentives. So this project, when it is completed, will be 100% on the real estate tax rolls, 100% on the personal property tax rolls, and we'll have, um, and, and you will be capturing 100% of your 2.75% sales tax of the city. One of the things that allows us to spend um, are the CID funds on reimbursable project costs that are related to what would be normally considered private improvements is if there is a blight declaration that goes along with the CID petition. And to that uh, extent, we have provided as Exhibit D in the petition a blight study. Um, the blight study um, was um, commissioned with James Askew and Associates. Mr. Askew um, is a frequent um, uh, provider of these types of services, not only for private developers, but for cities. He's, he's been a consultant and developed blight studies for the cities of Grandview, Blue Springs, and Kansas City on, on different projects. And he provided this uh, study to us to determine whether the study area um, is uh, has any of the specific factors that define a blighted area under the uh, Community Improvement District statute. And the study area, as you know, is 6709 Blue Ridge Boulevard. And I'm going to read little uh, parts of that blight study that you have before you as Exhibit D, um, just to highlight uh, for the record some of those blighting factors that exist at that location today. There are photos on pages 12 through 14, as well as pages 21 through 26 of that blight study um, that depict some of the areas of concern uh, um, regarding the condition of the property. Uh, the highest and best use of this property, um, if it were vacant, would still be this type of a commercial use. However, if this was a vacant site, then the economic uh, conditions the way they are today, you would pr this site would probably be deferred for development until the climate changed. Um, but fortunately, this is a developed site, and it has a, a building shell that um, is 23 years in age, so it has some of the issues related to that um, age, as well as elements of the building, <coughs> excuse me, that are a 1987 vintage design which is not is specifically mod, uh, was specifically made for Walmart, but even Walmart themselves has now relocated to a different type of design and diff because there's always an evolution of the needs of different retailers, as, a, as especially big box retailers, and what the design needs to be. So, in reviewing this particular site, Mr. Askew looked to what would be the needs and the change and, and the deficiencies in this site as relates to a Sutherland Lumber Company trying to locate there or, in, or other types of Class A occupants, which is what Sutherland's would be considered from a retail standpoint. <clears throat> so the factors that, that were identified in the study um, are as follows. One of the criteria is defective or inadequate street layout. And on page 17, this begins, that's, begins the discussion regarding these factors. We see that there has been a consistent stormwater issue um, that um, the topography of the site is such that stormwater has been funneled into the area and the grade differential has, has, has a presence of a drainage outlet and concrete swales um, that, um, especially on the Hunter side, uh, Hunter Avenue side, call, cause a pooling of water in the uh, study area. 
and that pooling has caused some concerns regarding the foundation <coughs> of the building and settlement of the foundation around the steps to an entry of the rear building is apparent. Epoxy has been applied to the base of the building's foundation and around utility pipe connections to the building in an attempt to limit <coughs> the damage from chronically pooling water. The study area's street surface deteriorated apparently due to the excessive water that has been channeled to the area. And you'll see in one of our line items, stormwater um, drainage and work on these issues is one of the things that we are, uh, is listed as a project cost in our CID petition. Factor number two, insanitary or unsafe conditions. The Sutherland representatives that accompanied and the Sutherland's independent reporting reported to Mr. Askew that the interior of the building includes asbestos in the mastic ad adhesive flooring. Um, and the prospective occupant, being Sutherland, is going to have to remove that because their use of that building is going to require heavy equipment and heavy traffic of that equipment on these fl this flooring, so it'll automatically break up this, this flooring that's there. So for our, for our use, that mastic um, uh, flooring must be um, removed and another type of flooring, <clears throat> excuse me, put in place. Also, the existing 23-year-old roof um, is, uh, has leaks in it in different areas, which pose an insanitary and unsafe condition. The building is unoccupied, which in itself is an issue uh, as far as um, blight is concerned. You always have, we have had evidence of unlawful, unlawful trespass there. And um, of course, you always have the chronic dumping that occurs. And I know that Walmart's made an effort when alerted to this to clean that up consistently, but it's, it is a, a chronic issue when you have a, a vacant building. Uh, the deterioration, number three, the deterioration of the site improvements. The building was constructed to the 1987 design, as we had mentioned. They vacated the building in 2009 to occupy a new structure. The obsolescence of this design is one of, is a factor that can, that leads towards and is part of the definition of blight. And that physical deterioration um, 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 takes away from the, the ability to utilize this property in its, in its highest use. So it's essentially being underutilized, as we all know, it's vacant, but um, and, the, and that underutilization is something um, that is, is a factor also in blight considerations. The physical deterioration is evident throughout the building as well as the parking lot. I mentioned the floor tiles and the roof. Um, the roof is the original roof. And the HVAC systems um, for the use that we'll have are going to meet, need to be upgraded. The building foundation is deteriorated and areas of the parking lot and um, curbs and sidewalks adjoining the building are deteriorated. The loading docks has observable areas of deteriorating concrete support and um, Sutherland uh, reports that the existing dock doors will require replacement to meet the standards of their operation. Um, big box retailers such as these um, have individual characteristics to their chain for the lumber company use, the lumber or home improvement use. Um, some of the things are uh, that need to happen is there's a a change in the um, the the ceiling height and of the space in which they do conduct their business, and so you have a cost of lighting that's required for for making the ceiling higher. You have costs for reconfiguring the HVA system. You have costs for um, changing the fire suppression system, the sprinkler system that's there. Um, so these are all um, factors um, that lead to the, a condition of the building that is, is considered a deterioration of site improvements for a Class A user. Now, one of the other factors, improper subdivision and obsolete platting is not a factor here. And we don't have to hit every single one of them um, under the definition, but since this is subdivided and the plat is sufficient and, and there won't be any need for replatting uh, for this particular site. And the existence of conditions which endanger life or property by fire or other causes, um, asbestos, is, is asbestos, the leaky roof, the excessive runoff are all can all qualify under that factor as well. So with that, um, our, our, our consultant has determined that the study area um, has the combination of factors that are cited in the statute for a blighted area are present in our study area. 
and that the study area complies with the statutory definition to be declared a blighted area. Uh, so what do we do with our with our, the condition of this, and what are we planning on doing to to uh, make this development happen? Um, within Exhibit C in our petition is the five-year plan, which is required by the statute. And within that five-year plan are the district projects described in more detail. We have, we have on this list approximately $2,088,000 worth of redevelopment costs that are going to go into this particular site. Um, and we've divided those up into the categories of site work, building structure, electrical and fire, and of course professional consultants. Um, one of the things as I highlighted in the blight in our in our existing conditions study are issues regarding roof. The roof recovery is a, is going to cost approximately two hundred and ninety seven thousand four hundred fifty two dollars. The tile and asbestos r removal is a hundred and seven thousand uh, dollar line item. The um, auto fire sprinkler modification is going to be three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The um, HVAC remodel, electrical renovations, 250,000, 70,000 HVAC remodel. Um, Stormwater drainage is right now estimated to be 125. Um, we're not really sure if, um, if that's going to be where it's going to end, but that's kind of where we're, we're seeing that those, those, are gonna, those expenses are going to be. So in addition to a purchase price, in addition to three to five million dollars in racking and inventory, um, a 150 dollars to $200,000 monument sign, a building package sign that we haven't yet gotten our total price on, as well as other site plan amenities, and then you put this other $2 million in renovations because we're doing a redevelopment, um, this, there's a ex significant expenditure to bring an existing building and be able to use this existing building and redevelop it into a, 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 new, a new, brand new from our perspective, brand new, new to us store uh, that we're excited about bringing to the community. So I'm hoping that these, this type of information regarding the amount of the investment helps you understand why we're seeking this CID to help us with those reimbursable costs and bottom line. Um, although Sutherland is a big box store, it is, a, it is, it is not um, a big box store in the genre of a Walmart or a Home Depot or a Lowe's, this is your this is your your smaller, very directed regional store um, um, that has an annual sales. We're hoping at this location to be, on average, ten million dollars and up. So, in contrast to a Walmart that might be sixty or eighty million dollars a year in annual sales, or a Home Depot or or those that may be closer to 20 to 25 million. So kind of gives you an idea of where our price point is about how far we can go in investing in a particular site and make it the store sustainable for in our business model. Um, Sutherland's has stores through 13 states um, and they're very strategic in the, in the locating of these stores. They, their, their peer group of these smaller home improvement, many privately owned uh, companies um, have gone through a difficult time over the last 10 years, and, and a, a good example of the ones, who, a good example of one who didn't, hasn't survived, and um, is Payless. Um, but Sutherland's has has survived, and, and primarily because they have been so selective and um, so careful in in the level of investment they make at a particular location, so that it will be sustainable and successful for them as well as the community in which they locate. So, um, so tonight we're hoping that the, um, you will um, look favorably up, upon um, this application um, and understand that even though we're asking for a CID, this is going to be entirely at risk. This is going to be pay as you go, so the reimbursement will come as the sales are made and the sales tax is collected. There isn't going to be any bonding of, of, the, of, the, of the reimbursement amount. Now, as it relates to the cooperative agreement, I, <clears throat> I was mistaken in reading the ordinance that we, we had the opportunity to um, take, a, ha, take the basic agreement, have the basic agreement, and then 
um, if there weren't any issues with it, we would go ahead and be able to <clears throat> complete it and that the ordinance just authorized it but didn't have to have it attached to it in any fashion. Um, but <clears throat> so I apologize for the fact that we, we got that to you today. Um, but the cooperative agreement as drafted before you is almost exactly like the cooperative agreement you have in place at this time with Raytown Square Community Improvement District where the high V and uh, the RH Johnson company owned properties are located it's um, the exact same terms I um, that were was in that particular agreement um, the cooperative agreement provides that the taxes are collected by uh, the Department of Revenue as required by the statute um, the developer has to provide um, the invoices and certification of payment before they can uh, receive um, a certification that says these costs you expended are eligible for reimbursement from the funds. We have to, consistent with the statute, provide you a copy of the annual budget of the CID. In our request, the mayor um, is appoint the the mayor will be the the appointing. Uh, per, uh, person for the members of the board through a process by which the board of direct the initial board of directors are approved by you because they're set forth in the petition you'll see that uh, Paul McKnight who's here this evening is going to be on that first board of directors and then in subsequent years um, the board of directors will present to the mayor a list of candidates or the, the uh, slate of, of officers they would like elected to the board and then that appointment is made by the mayor so there's always going to be a connection there we have the responsibility of providing you records any records you want of course as a political subdivision which is what a community improvement district is that's all public knowledge anyway as well as um, the posting of our meetings consistent with the sunshine law so that anyone who wants to have information regarding the conduct of the community improvement districts business it's as public as, as what you're familiar with in your role as a city. Um, so with that, we are available to answer any questions. We do have an end of our due diligence period at this time under our contract is February 25th with a closing date then three days later on the, tw the 28th. And um, we have um, uh, one, we're working through our final site plan right now and those are, those are we're, we're getting close on on uh, getting our the types of entitlements that that we're supposed to to have um, to be able to open this store so with that we respectfully request your favorable consideration of this we are asking for two readings this evening which I know is highly unusual for you and we appreciate your consideration for that and we will answer any questions um, that we can um, to assist you in your decision making this evening okay are there questions of the applicant at this time Ms. Melson why wasn't this brought forward earlier if it's been in the works for some time? There, um, you mean the app, the petition, the actual petition? Right. Um, well, we continually were perfect. Our biggest, our biggest holdup was perfecting our numbers because when we first, the first draft that we had had a, several months ago had like one point two million dollars in reimbursable costs. Our engineers and consultants wanted to fine tune, um, in particular, the fire suppression line item, the stormwater line item, and we also wanted to, to get an idea of our process as it relates to um, a sign. The monument sign was really, really important to us at this location, and we have just completed last week our BZA process to get a variance for our height and 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 essentially structure of those and from so from a systematic standpoint <clears throat> uh, we wanted to we're trying to click off the the items that are key um, in the um, key to to this development and, and it, we want you to drink our water Christine thank you it's a special water <laughs> special water, special water. <laughs> <Thank you. clears throat> and we're hoping that um, um, because at any juncture in this process we may not be able to go through with this because of the because it is that delicate of a situation regarding costs and so we just kind of been a little more systematic and in, in checking the boxes so we're here tonight because we think we are very very close 
uh, in completing and being able to say, yes, we're going to be able to complete this. Um, and that's kind of why the order went the way it did. Okay. Um, and when you were talking, you said something about um, they're not asking for any other incentives, but it would be back on the tax rolls at the 2.75, the sales tax that we would be getting. But in here it has um, that the district would be for a minimum of 20 years. Well, <clears throat> the district is, is the, it would be the community improvement district is going to be a minimum of 20 years. So the additional sales tax that we'll be collecting will be at least 20 years. It'll probably be closer to 30 years. And even then, we may not recoup our entire $2 million of eligible reimbursable costs. Um, but it, that is going to be, that's an additional tax. The, 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 um, the store from the day it opens will not be taking away any of your any any of the existing sales tax levies. So it's not like a TIF. We're not looking for right. okay. we're not taking anything from what the city would normally get if there was not a CID there. We're just adding an additional tax. Okay. Um, you did mention in here about the asbestos, and I was curious. Got to find a sticky note that it said that um, it was relayed to by the Sutherland's representative. Um, well, that's well, what, that right. Mr. Askew or right. whoever did this assessment didn't check that out, that it was relayed to by? He didn't, he, yeah, because he, he felt like it was reported to him, but he can't, he didn't conduct a test. He didn't take samples and, and have them tested. Um, those that type of evaluation was done with the, by the Sutherland group when they because they go in and they investigated on their oh, own okay. the condition of the building. Okay, um, and then also in here uh, under condition study on the easements and encroachments, it says that um, you, that you were not provided with the ALTA survey or title report to determine the easements. Is there a reason for that? Um, he we. Because it's an existing um, um, location, we didn't we didn't go through the expense of providing an ultra survey, and it's already been platted. So we didn't go ahead and resurvey to that extent to identify every single <coughs> easement for purposes of the blight study. Okay. Now, we we will have to understand where those are for purposes of our construction. True. But but we didn't do any kind of separate surveying for purposes of the blight study. Okay. I think that's it until I find some more. Ms. Razor. Um, in Exhibit C, Part C, um, under site work, what is, would you explain what miscellaneous calming traffic is for $150,000? Well, actually, <laughs> actually, um, that's, that's a, a typo. It's traffic calming, and that is, going, that is for um, um, what the staff has to do from a, a site standpoint and what they'd like to see happen, not only with the development of the existing Walmart, uh, vacant Walmart, but also the vacant High V, is that there be some islands placed to, when you come in off of 350 and you're going into the parking lot, to make there more of a, a seemingly roadway in. And I'm, I'm, Traffic calming includes such things as islands. It also islands. includes speed bumps, that sort of thing. And those kind of things. Yeah. That's, that's what we, we're doing for that. And that way you, you will have more of a sense of, of, a, of a, I was looking for Mr. Benson because I'm probably being a terrible planner here, but he, want, he would like to see an avenue so that you get a feeling of a, of a, of a street. Because everyone cuts, cuts through. I mean, I, I used to do it for Chiefs game all the time. And you cut through that parking lot and everyone believes it's a roadway. But it really isn't a roadway, but using some types of traffic calming will be able to make it more like a, like a, de, a defined path, a path from 350 over to 67th Street. And uh, is it safe to say uh, that this project includes what was only the old Walmart? That's correct. It's only okay. the old Walmart. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Ertz. Thank you. Um, when you talk about uh, a, a few things here, I'll get back to the combing thing there. I noticed that our fire department uses this parking lot to turn north on Blue Ridge there. Um, is is that taken into consideration on something like this when they 
uh, they actually cut through the lot because there is no other way to go down 350 highway and, and go up Blue Ridge cut, cut off um, um, I, you know I don't know about that I, I, I think okay. that we in as far as the design that we're we're being asked to do with traffic calming and, and islands and stuff that's all coming from staff so I'm sure that they probably have heard those types of comments or okay. understand that condition but um, I'm certainly will mention it when in our continued discussions on about the site plan okay um, so your improvements to the um, well I believe obviously I worked there when there, when there was a high V food store there and um, on heavy rains there'd be five feet of water in the back of that building there is or is your site plan going to alleviate that problem once and for all I don't know if we're gonna alleviate it I think we're gonna try to do some management of it I don't it's I don't gotten know. better as we went on and they put in some additional storm boxes but if they're not kept clean they're they do back up and you have a huge problem back there right. one thing that's very deteriorated and you even have pictures of it here is the fence that separates you from the houses that are behind the building will that fence be replaced yeah the final site plan um, that we're working with with the one of the requests is to actually put a up a, um, uh, a fence a new a brand new fence we're looking at maybe doing something like PVC white something nicer than obviously what is what is there like that yeah. um, but you won't be able to change the altitude of the road back there obviously and as far as the drainage on the parking lot to the front um, will the will the parking lot be completely resurfaced at this point we're not we're not sure okay that, that is an option okay <laughs> christine would you repeat the answer please for the oh the, the, uh, home? Uh, yeah for the for the record um we're not we're not certain to what extent the the, uh, the resurfacing you know the degree of the resurfacing of the of the parking lot is going to take at this point we are there's going to be some changement as far as traffic how the traffic will go in front of the building we do want to have at one point a place for people to come and pick up materials sure so we're trying to figure out how that's going to fit in the front of the building t as well I imagine the city has codes for depth of asphalt on pavement and all those things will be followed and checked should they not be at that standard now that is very that's very true and okay, and 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 I remember that lot your well. community development department is it's, uh, very diligent <laughs> in their communications with us what do you think? Um, I guess it's asbestos removal even though it was built in 1989 maybe 87 87 87 okay thank you but uh, I, I see you have uh, obviously a, a nice list of of, uh, of items here and uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear more thank you okay we're gonna go start the second round miss Melson um we received a draft cooperative agreement this evening when would we be able to see the final draft well from our perspective that is the final draft um, and I think that um, staff has already has done a cursory review and I think they might have comments for it but it is um, um, I labeled this draft because it's the so I sent it and it had, you know and that it's draft from me but as I said the <clears throat> terms in it um, are exactly the same as the terms that are in your existing Raytown Square CID cooperative agreement okay um, and this may be back to a staff point question but I'll go ahead and ask it in here it's got under article one it's got City Council as the governing body of the city shouldn't that be Board of Aldermen okay um, and could you go over um, it's section 4.05 the default of maintenance obligations um, in the event the district defaults its obligations pursuant to section 3.02 of this agreement and the city incurs cost to fulfill the district's obligations under that section the district shall reimburse the cost of the city to reimburse procedure set forth in this code. But if the district defaults and this, um, then the city has to incur those costs, correct? It's on page six under section 4.05. You don't, you aren't required to incur the costs, but if you do incur the costs, you're entitled to reimbursement from the CID sales tax for those for any for those costs 
but if it just defaulted, wouldn't that mean that the, the bill or the business wasn't there, so those sales tax wouldn't be coming in? And not necessarily. The difficulty the the difficulty with this our using a CID to do re redevelopment costs that are really more private in nature is that your form document your form. Um, um, agreement in speaking to the perpetual ownership, repair and maintenance of, of district projects, our district project are really more the private improvements. Um, okay. Whereas the more traditional improvements that the city would be concerned about, where they might want to do is if we have any road improvements that we would have had to do or, you know, that, that we wouldn't have, have done or completed. Those are the types, the more public improvements, then those are the ones that you're going to see a city want to step in and, and do something about. Our list of, of district projects, which is that Exhibit C, don't contain, um, let me see, before I, see, before I make this comment, let me double check this. Will likely not contain any traditional public improvements. Okay. Um, away from that and back to the ordinance, um, it states that the district plan provides for the financing of such district projects as contributions towards the stormwater and public roadway improvements, redevelopment through renovation and reconstruction of existing structures, et cetera. So with that, I mean, you've discussed some of the stormwater issues in the back of the building, but then on the public roadway improvements, would that also include any type of improvement off of 350? Um, any improve any or Blue Ridge? If there's anything that's in thing? the public right of way, it would include that. But right now, I don't know if we have anything in the public right of way. Okay. Yeah, because it's on the other side. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Van Beskert. Well, it's uh, refreshing to see uh, a development project where the developer is not coming to us with their hand out for public funding. Um, I realize it will be, you know, tax uh, taxes that will pay for these improvements, but uh, that will be collected in addition to the taxes that we will be reaping. Um, and uh, so, you know, a developer would have a choice, I guess, to just uh, add costs to their products or to uh, to fund this through the CID district would be the, the choice. Um, I'm, I'm excited about the prospect of getting uh, Sutherland here. I think it uh, is a great fit for our city. And... Uh, I, I do have concerns about, um, I, I guess, the other buildings there, uh, the, the old Hy-Vee building, is that owned by Hy-Vee still? No. You no. Know, who no. owns that building? It's owned that, by Johnson. It's an ownership group, of one partner of whom is, is uh, R.H. Johnson. Okay. Now, do they also own the Payless, where Payless is, uh, Shoes is at, and the, uh, the building that housed the uh, dollar store, do you know? I'm not sure. We do have a um, an ECR, an easements, covenants, and restrictions agreement between the property owners there that deals with issues that are related. You know, there is some common area, so how that's handled between the, the ownership, other ownership group, and, and it, they, it's been in existence um, from the beginning. It was originally between Walmart and and um, the and the the ownership group. A partner, a partner of whom um, R. H. Johnson is one. Of them. I don't want to overrepresent his ownership interest because that's not fair to him because there are other people involved. Um, but so there are some, there there is a um, there's a a mechanism in place where everyone cooperates on certain issues such as park parking lot sharing and and uses. You know that we have some restrictions because it was important to us that if we locate there that there be some restrictions on what kind of uses could locate. Near us, and most of the time that has to do with the types of objectionable uses that most people don't want around them, like um, 
adult entertainment, those kind of things. So, um, so there is a there is a document in place where all the owners are cooperate, you know, cooperate on certain topics such as parking, common area maintenance, those kind of things. Okay. Well, I know the the CID district does not include the area going over 2350 highway, is it? And it, do, and it doesn't include that area. It doesn't mean that it couldn't someday be expanded because under the CID statute, CIDs can be expanded. But there um, would be improvements to the entrance uh, and there, exit onto 350 Highway. There, won't, there are not improvements directly off of 350 Highway. The improvements will be along, once our, will be on our property. That, that so it'll begin so that so that like the island that I was talking the islands that kind of are going to create a, a a roadway a more defined roadway that's we're going to do the work on our property and then when the our adjacent property comes in for redevelopment the staff will be asking for them to do the same improvements so it would be the Blue Ridge and 67th Street exits and entrances and uh, would be a part of that right um, yeah well, I, I'm sure this will be an incentive to draw. Uh, another business to the the vacant building that uh, uh, where that housed high V and uh, uh, I uh, it does seem a little bit to me like um, kind of like the movie Groundhog Day uh, where, where we keep having these proposals come before us where there's this urgency and uh, um, and uh, tight time constraints on the project uh, to where we're having to uh, make decisions uh, sometimes a little a little more quickly than maybe we'd we'd like to. But um, I uh, understand the your situation, and uh, so I. I Again, I'm excited about the prospect of, of Sutherland coming here, and uh, I think it will enhance uh, our city. Thank you. Okay, two more questions, then we're going to go to uh, public comment. Uh, Mr. Kramer. Um, yeah, myself, I'm excited about this. Um, it's pretty much in my backyard. It's a block from my house. so. Uh, and, and I drive past this area uh, frequently and, and uh, am, ex am excited to see improvements on the property. I uh, have a home improvement business that uh, uh, will be part of Raytown. Um, I hope when you put the PVC fence up, you guys know who to contact to buy that from. But anyway, um, one, one question I've got, it's, it's kind of a concern. For the people that pay less, um, in regards to the construction that's going to go on and everything, I uh, I, t I take it we have got a friendly relationship there, and we'll be able to work through uh, any type of problems where people might want to access their store or anything with construction going on. Um, I, I'm 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 after hearing that comment, I'm, I'm sure I don't know if if our our logistics person people have have looked at that yet. Uh, but certainly, I'm sh I, Sutherland's is going to want to be a good neighbor to their their peer retailer. So I, I confident they'll probably well, be sure and communicate. Sure, sure. Yeah, they they've hung in there. They're <laughs> they have hung in. So there. yeah, and uh, but I do look forward to the opportunity of having you guys as be part of Raytown and and thank you so much for for choosing Raytown. I'm going to, I said two more, I'm going to give the uh, last question at this time. There'll be a, still yet tonight more an opportunity. I'm going to give the last question to Mr. Azure before we go to public comment. Uh, just a quick question, and, and you, you made reference to the magnitude of what the sales may be in this project. Um, can you give me a kind of a vision of what the scope of it is? Uh, I, I think of, for example, the Sutherlands in Sedalia, which is a pretty good sized building. Um, opposed to the one on 40 Highway. Um, you mean, the, I mean what it, the inventory? They're, they're both totally different, and I'm, I'm trying to get a feeling is this going to be primarily lumber or? It's going to have lumber, but it also, I think there was a. Yeah, go ahead. If I'm not sure if you're familiar with our Harrisonville store. 
Oh, Paul McKnight. I'm an assistant controller with Sutherland Lumber, 4000 Main, Kansas City, Missouri, 64111. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with our, our store in Harrisonville. It's, it's about 110,000 square feet, and it's a combination of lumber, hardware, plumbing. Um, I'm, I, I don't know the exact footprint of the Sedalia store that you mentioned, but it's going to be a sizable footprint and investment on our part. Okay, and I, I asked the question because the one of the Sedalia has a lot of furniture in it. Uh, at and this time, we're still strategizing of what we might have, you know, what the product okay. mix might, might be, but that is one of the options that we're looking at. It, it, it's such a large footprint, such a large square footage, that we would have enough room to do some, some type of furniture, furniture okay. I believe. And, and I asked the question because, uh, not that it's maybe that important to the uh, CID, but to what the vision of the people in Raytown want, um, you know, I'm, I'm like Mr. Kramer. Uh, I do frequent these stores. You want lumber, you want to go to a lumber shop. And when I think of lumber, I think of Sutherland. And obviously, this is going to be a totally different kind of project that's on 40 Highway. So I'm just, you know, trying to understand what we're getting in this I mean, project. So, like I said, we're still evaluating the footprint, but it's going to be a sizable lumber okay, thank product you. mix. Yeah, okay. Okay, very good. I thank you for your patience with it. We're going to probably, as a course of discussion, we're going to go to public comment, and then we're going to go back again to board discussion. So just stay tuned. In the meantime, I want to bring the public up to see if they have any questions or, or to address the board. Thank you. So at this time, would anyone in the audience like to address the board on this particular matter at this time? Welcome, Andy. Thank you. I've been a customer of Sutherland's over on Warnall since 1992 intermittently when I've lived here. But you know what bothered me is I moved to Raytown. I had to go clear over to Warnall for Sutherland's. It'd be a real convenience to have one here for Raytown citizens or even people from out of town could go and buy what they need and pay Raytown sales tax be an asset to the community, but I really have an objection at skipping of the second reading. This is, I object to this almost every time unless there's a real emergency. In fact, it came to my attention in the Raytown report that all these had a skipping of the second reading and it was sneaked through. I really feel that there should be two readings. I like to see this proceed, but there should be two readings of this as required. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to address the board on this matter at this time? Okay, once, twice. Okay, we're going to move past public comments then. I'm going to go back to staff comment, or does staff have anything else to add after the applicant's presentation? Should say. I don't believe we do. Okay, we're going to go to board discussion. We can continue to discuss this matter, or we can entertain a motion to continue it to a date certain of another time, or we can also uh, offer a motion to perform the second reading and uh, suspend the rules. Mr. Kramer has made a motion to suspend the rules and perform the second reading, seconded by Mr. Azier. Mr. Willeth, are you comfortable with the process, sir? I'm comfortable with the process, but I sent the city clerk out of the room to check on the Ditzler ordinance, and I may end up taking a vote. Well, you may just have to. <laughs> So, Mr. Kramer has offered the motion to suspend the rules and perform the second reading, and here she comes. Getting more comfortable with the process by the moment. more comfortable here, now. Is there any discussion on suspension of the rules before we vote on that motion? By Kramer. Who is the second on the motion to suspend? The second was Mr. Azier. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Kramer. Discussion on suspension of the rules. Uh, Mr. Hamilton. Well, I too have a concern about this process, which has already been expressed by Mr. <laughs> and Buskert and, and others. I, it seems like here lately we've, we've had this procedure to suspend the rules frequently, and it's becoming a pattern is my concern, and I don't think that's a healthy way for this board to operate. Uh, I, I'm very much in favor of Sutherland's, but I'm concerned that this pattern is going to invite others to suddenly appear with a deadline date and then we're held hostage to either approve it that night with a second reading or not. And 
I'm, I'm just needing to express my concern about how we're operating. Okay. Thanks, sir. Mr. Ertz? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to express my concern, too, on, on that. I noticed it said the 25th, uh, and I know there's a motion already made, but um, we do have a finance meeting on the night of the 22nd, so there will be five aldermen here already that night. Should there be desire amongst the board to have a second reading on the 22nd? Uh, that would still give us three days before the 25th, and um, you know it, it could be a very short uh, special meeting. Um, I want Sutherland's here bad enough that I would come <laughs> stick around for an extra meeting that night. Um, you know, I, I like the project, but I, I do think it should be. I agree with Mr. Hamilton and, and uh, Alderman Van Buskert that you, you just have some concerns over uh, these deadline dates coming up from time to time. So I just want to throw that out there. If uh, if anybody has thinks that's a possibility, maybe that will affect how I will vote on the motion that is made. Okay. Further discussion, Mr. Pardue. I, I also feel uncomfortable about suspending the rules. So if we could either ask to change the motion or uh, entertain a different motion after that one is voted on, I would be for that. While we're contemplating this, I'd like for the uh, the board to be aware that, I mean, we had one person tonight talk to us about this during public comment. Um, I certainly am, am one who believes the public needs to be well aware of this. We advertised it last Thursday. We had one comment tonight. Um, if you want to have a special meeting, we can certainly arrange that. We need to make sure that we properly notify the, the public as well, so that would have to happen very rapidly. We need to check and see if the 22nd, I think you said, is available. We do have a motion in front of us. I will tell you, though, that um, while I want to do the, the, the proper, uh, perform the proper business procedure here, we also have Mr. Sutherland, who is a basically a Kansas City born and raised entrepreneur, started his business here. I've met with him personally. Uh, these folks are very down to earth. We have the assistant controller of the company with us here tonight. They've played ball with us. We've met with them. We have had countless meetings with them and staff is working with them on the site plan. Uh, they are right there with us. I used to get a lot of publications from uh, different realtors who are pr promoting Walmart properties across the nation. And there are a lot of Walmart stores available. They are sitting, sitting vacant, wanting people to come there. We have in our hands a business that wants to come here. They sought us out. They are in hand. It's not costing our taxpayers any money unless they buy a two before there. But yet, every single tax dollar that is earned at that store helps every citizen in this community. So I want to make sure we're doing the right thing here. It's certainly important that we provide ample time for our citizens to have input. We've advertised this. It's been five days at minimum. We had one person comment. Mr. Kramer. Um, yeah, and I would, I would kind of like to go along with that. Um, just imagine having to answer your constituents uh, if this deal falls through because we we don't want to do that second reading tonight and three years from now that building's still sitting vacant. I mean, you know, it's it, it's a matter of choices. We've got vacant buildings uh, strewn throughout the city as do many other communities and we've got an opportunity to fill it. And as the mayor said, um, they uh, they have played ball with us. They've, there, there's been many meetings. There's There's been uh, negotiations going on. Uh, between Walmart, Sutherland's, um, and and uh, uh, they've done their due diligence, and and uh, they've come before us with uh, an excellent opportunity for this community, and and I would hate to see that walk away. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Azure. Um I do understand that every time that we suspend the rules, that we're putting at risk the fact that there may be. Uh, citizens who might come to the next meeting and actually oppose the project. 
And that's why you have two readings. That's why we have two hearings. Um, and so we would be under the assumption then that if we postponed it for a week or two weeks, that we would have a number of people who would come in and say, don't let Sutherland into Raytown. Don't approve this project. Um, the thing that would scrutinize the most would be if indeed we were putting some unusual tax. In this case, um, uh, we are, the city is guaranteed in their budget the sales tax they would normally get. It's, it's a very comfortable approach to it. Um, and yes, I do admit that we have suspended the rules um, probably more than usual, but in every case it's been an economic redevelopment, which I might add for the past eight years has been the number one thing that the citizens of this city have wanted was to see Raytown rebuild, to grow, and to become more prosperous. Um, I don't see, uh, and, and actually as if I've gone door to door, I hear quite often, is Sutherland's going to come? We want him here. It's a positive project, and like someone mentioned earlier on the board, this is in the TIF. It's a very safe approach to it. So um, I'm, I'm willing to take that risk um, because I, I do believe in it, and I, I think that we need to move forward on the project as quick as possible to make this happen, uh, and it, it will be a very positive thing for Raytown that people will approve it. Further discussion before we vote on the motion in front of us, which is suspend the rules. Did you have a question, Ms. Barney, or anything else to answer? I guess all I'd add is that the, I, I think I speak for most of us when we're saying that we don't want to suspend the rules, not because we want to jeopardize what we have. I think most of us are, are in agreement that this is a, a good project for Raytown, and we'd love to see Sutherlands come in. Um, I think we're just concerned the the integrity of our of our meetings. I mean, this is something that we do on purpose, on purpose for a reason, uh, to have these two readings, and that you know to let it just slide every time we have someone that says it's important is a little frightening. And I I think that's our concern. I, I'm willing to go with the board's majority, though. I think that we have a good thing going here. So that's my two cents. Okay. I would note it will require seven affirmative votes to suspend the rule, two-thirds of the board to suspend the rule. Okay, very good. Mr. Willith, you're paid by the hour, correctly? Yeah. So when we come back again, we're going to be paying you again. That would be the hope. That would be correct, yes, sir. And every other staff person we have here tonight. Okay. If there's no further discussion, let's, uh, let's call the vote on uh, the motion before us. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Azure? Yes. Alderman Nelson? Yes. Alderman Ertz? Yes. Alderman Hamilton? No. Alderman Pardue? Yes. Alderman Van Buskert? I'll pass. Alderman Lightfoot? Yes. Alderman Mock? Yes. Alderman Van Buskert? Yes. Motion passes 8 1. Is that correct? All right. Then I think it would be appropriate at this time. Now, Joe, do I need to go ahead and. I don't want to close the public hearing. I want to go ahead and. I assume the motion was to perform the second reading, which essentially continues the public hearing. Is that safe to assume? proceed with the second reading of the ordinance and then take if there's going to be any further testimony or input at that point close the public hearing before you go to a final vote on it. Okay, very good. And that's the clerk to perform the second reading then. An ordinance approving a petition for the creation of the Raytown Crossing Community Improvement District, creating the Raytown Crossing Community Improvement District, and authorizing the city to enter into a cooperative agreement by and between the city of Raytown, Missouri and the district. Now, do we need to officially reopen still or continue the public hearing at this time? Public hearing remains open. Okay. All right.
right, so we're going to continue. We're going to go back then at this point. We're going to ask for additional comments or discussion amongst the board, and we can. We are welcome to bring the applicant back up to answer any questions. Do we have another opportunity for the public to comment at this time? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to go right now to public comment again to make sure that we have ample opportunities here. Uh, would anyone in the audience like to address the board at the time of public hearing for the second reading regarding this matter? Why should anyone address the board? You don't want to hear from one person. You don't like it that only one person speaks to you. So it's a waste of time, isn't it? Hmm. Would anyone else like to address the board on this matter? Evelyn Anderson, 5422 Ditzler. <clears throat> I just would like to know why Walmart wasn't made to clean up the site if there's this many problems. With all the money they have and all the, the things that they got out there, they got a light out there to, to control the traffic in and out of their building. I don't shop Walmart. I don't like Walmart, and I won't shop there. I just want to know why they weren't made to clean up the mess they left. Yeah, I, I, we're not privy to the, the negotiations between the, the buyer and the seller. But I thank you for your comments, ma'am. Would anyone else like to address the board? OK. We're going to move past public hearings. I only heard one uh, question offered the board out of those two, so thank you. All right, I'm going to go then to, uh, would the applicant like to come back up and, and continue their discussion or presentation, Christine? Or you want to stand by and see what questions we have? All right, yes, we're going to go to board discussion. Okay, Mr. Oops, I missed my guess. I thought Mr. Van Buskirk was up. Ms. Melson, are you pushing your button? There you go. Um, my thing is back on the cooperative agreement, and I just want to make sure that uh, in the final copy that it lists instead of City Council Board of Aldermen. Also, I had another clarifying question on page two of the Ask You study on what is under the summary of salient facts on the land size. It says 8.41 acres more or less. Just curious why the more or less is in there. And that's on page two of the ASCII study. It's fair game for, for staff or the applicant. Andy? Yes, it's uh, standard operating practice for most surveyors to put more or less because they refrain from an absolute exact amount because um, it's probably 8.410368 so that's oh, why okay. they do 8.41 more or less okay all right thank you okay. mr lightfoot i just motion to approve second mr lightfoot has the motion to approve we're going to close the public hearing we have a motion before us to approve the bill number 6250-11. We have a second by Mr. Kramer. Further discussion before we vote on this matter? This is, an, this is a very important project for the, this city, so I want to make sure everybody's had a chance to express their concerns. Mr. Mayor, I would note to the Board of Aldermen that it would be, I would anticipate, though the ordinance has language that we have authorization for the cooperative agreement, that the Board of Aldermen will see the cooperative agreement again in, a, in a, uh, another ordinance or meeting for approval of same, as we did in the Ditzler case. We came, we had this type ordinance approved first, then we came back to you with later with the final cooperative agreement and the ordinance to approve same. Very good. Thank you for that clarity. Mr. Ertz? I think in that cooperative agreement, there'll probably be the answers to a lot of more detailed questions that would come up as to the scope of the project and what all, what the lot will look like and site plans would, would come before us. Is, would that be my understanding somewhere down the road? Or, or how about somebody telling me what a timeline would be on this project?
site plan with it, but I would anticipate it being this draft agreement with an itemization to improve the site for you. Mr. Ertz, were you asking for a timeline on the project as well, or the timeline? Yeah, that, I guess that would be a separate question. How about a timeline on the project? Christine, anything to add on the timeline, or, sir? No, at this point, we do not. I mean, we obviously, we'd like to get it open as soon as possible. But at this point, I, I really can't commit to whether it be, you know, end of June, end of August. Um, well, my comment is you're, you, you gave us a timeline. We'd like to know what kind enough. of timeline we can give you before this goes away. I think you should add touche on that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, you I, understand. I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I if, if we're, we're hurrying here for a reason, I would expect to not see that lot empty a year from now or even Agreed. six months oh. from now. I mean, we want to get it open as fast as possible because we are, we're going to be investing money into the property. And obviously, we want, we want those, uh, that 1% sales tax and the reimbursement for those we, expenses. We have another developer in town that's owned property for a long, long time and left it empty. So I, I, re at, I really would <laughs> have to say that we, we have to see it, okay? Can I work with staff to, to develop? Please. I, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Other questions, the applicant? Uh, no, none of Further discussion. We've got a motion and a second before us. Once, twice. Call a vote, please. Alderman Lightfoot? Yes. Alderman Kramer? Yes. Alderman Azier? Yes. Alderman Mock? Yes. Alderman Hamilton? Yes. Alderman Ertz? Yes. Alderman Pardue? Yes. Alderman Van Veskert? Yes. Alderman Melson? Yes. I've forgotten the gentleman's name that came before us. The, uh, your name, sir? Paul McKnight. Mr. McKnight, uh, you've represented Sutherland's, um, in addition to Mark, at, at several of our meetings. You've been very professional, very honorable uh, to deal with. You've done a great job with staff. Um, I, I know that staff beat on you pretty hard last week for what they're looking for, and I, I'm excited about uh, the, the prospects, I, I know as a, as a youngster, I, I went through the 40 Highway store and I knew where every single one of the best two befores were and where they were hidden. So um, I, I still shop there today. I, I, I love the fact that we've got a Sutherlands, a hometown Sutherlands coming to Raytown. I can tell you every single citizen, sir, that I've talked to about this, some of them have been praying that this was going to happen. And they are excited about it. They look forward to you being our, our home improvement store. And that we, we can, in fact, buy our own building supplies here in Raytown. Uh, it is a big deal for us. And it's, I think it's exciting that uh, you've not asked for any incentives other than the CID and the fact that you don't, uh, any funds that's provided to that, a citizen has to buy a tube for it or a material there to, to pay that tax. And, but yet every citizen in the city benefits from that. So I, I want to make sure that's not misconstrued in this silly season that we seem to have before us. Uh, so thank you, sir, for all that you've done and will continue to do for this city. Uh, I thank you for your, uh, your honor and, and respect that you've given to us as well. Appreciate it. We're looking forward as well to uh, helping the community of Raytown and the citizens. We think it's a great opportunity. So thank you very much. I appreciate thank you. It. With that, I'll ask the clerk to perform the re first reading on item number 11, please. An ordinance authorizing the city of Raytown to enter into an intergovernmental co cooperation agreement for the investment of public funds through the Missouri Securities Investment Program. Mr. Wilmoth, anything to add, sir? Um, just a brief description of the uh, MOSIP program. It's a investment pool primarily used by school districts but open to any government within the state of Missouri uh, that allows you to pool your shared resources for a higher uh, return rate or, or yield rate. Um, so we're looking at uh, entering into an agreement with MOSIP so that uh, as funds are available, uh, we could invest those at uh, possibly, you know, prime plus 50 basis points. Uh, for our idle cash rather than leaving it in our current uh, money market account, get a few more basis points on the on the yield. Um, but anyway, this uh, th the way it works through state law is that you have to enter into an intergovernmental agreement, and that's why uh, there's two readings required. Um, again, I don't uh, I don't anticipate that we'll use MOSIP 
um, all that often on the long-term investment side, um, unless they can beat out the local banks in town. But on the uh, overnight sweep account, it's uh, far more lucrative than any account we have around here. So uh, with that, I'll entertain any questions you may have. Mr. Van Buskirk. If you're asking for a second reading tonight, you may not get it. <laughs> I'm not, sir. Um, how much how much additional uh, yield do you feel like we may achieve from from this? Well, of course, investments are at the time you purchase them, but I've been following it the past three months. It's around 50 basis points higher than what I've seen in the uh, traditional CD market uh, from banks like UMB, Commerce, Blue Ridge Trust. So they're, they're able to offer a little bit higher yield because they're pooling all of the money together. So even though we may only invest, say, $250,000, it will be an investment that's uh, worth 7 or $8 million. Thus, the interest on 7 or $8 million is far more lucrative than on 250000 It's okay. a similar concept to the, uh, the state revolving fund that we use on uh, the sewer debt. Uh, the city issued $15 million in sewer debt, but it was a part of a state issue of over $300 million. Uh, the investment of those uh, has uh, created a tremendous offset that's helped pay for the interest um, on the sewer debt, not only for Raytown, but for all the cities that are involved in the program. It's a similar concept. When you pool resources together, the yield is higher for everybody and the risk is minimized uh, because you're only you know, responsible for your portion of the risk. That's, that was, I guess, my next question, is the level of risk and uh, secu security of the investment. Right. Do you feel it's um, the, a secured investment? The instruments that we'll be entertaining, at least in the short term, uh, will have no risk because they're just going to be sweep accounts, meaning any idle cash you have in your bank at the end of the night will sweep out into an investment. You'll, purchase, you'll sell it in the morning to have that cash back in your bank account before business starts. Um, it's just it's a, a standard overnight sweep agreement. There is no risk involved. Uh, it doesn't have to be collateralized. Um, there's other uh, tools that they sell that do involve risk, but it's no different than uh, buying any uh, investment that we currently buy. Um, it's just that we'll be buying it in a pool, thus the yield will be a little bit higher. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Mr. Wilmoth, you have again come up with a creative way to uh, to help us, and I, I appreciate that you have uh, you've sought this out and you've you've brought it forward. You continue, sir, to to live up to everything that you promised and that we thought we were going to get in you as a finance director for us. Thank you, Mr. Ertz. Uh, make a motion to continue this to is it March first or be a date certain of uh, March first. Second. I kind of thought we'd get a second on uh, second reading on that. Mayor Bauer, it's it's not a public hearing. It's just a first oh. reading. Darn it. Yeah, okay. So we're going to continue it to uh, the next time. this uh, The second reading will come before us on March the 1st. Everybody happy with that? There's no vote on it. Yeah, so there we go. It's, it's always not, it's past, yeah. <laughs> 